There is an ancient war between good and evil playing out on Earth, which permeates the lives of every single individual conscious soul, whether they know it or not, every day. And it is one of the most important things in the world that people are given the opportunity to have a coherent understanding of the nature of this spiritual war, and the true difference between good and evil, or else they will be taken advantage of and deceived towards self-degradation by Team Evil. Yes, there is a Team Evil, and they are motivated directly by the desire to stop people from growing, largely by convincing us to not care about our growth or our morality, and to embrace frivolous spite and other vices, because Team Evil gains significant power over others when they are weakened and lacking in virtue and motivation. Part of this war involves spreading mass ambiguity in regards to the nature and even the existence of evil. Often, in aspiring online spiritual communities especially, this deception is played out by encouraging people to believe that it is morally superior to embrace and integrate evil than it is to reject it and instead prioritize solely the pursuit of virtue and love. It is of utmost importance for the fate of your soul that you do not fall for this trap. There are absolutely, objectively sadistic, cruel, and wicked actions and motivations which create energy in the universe that is the exact opposite of benevolent, loving, and pure actions and motivations. To believe that it's all the same or that it doesn't matter is directly destructive to your motivation and virtue. One common deception which many embrace is the false notion that a balance between good and evil is necessary and able for people to learn good, and that evil is simply a teacher of good and therefore good. This is a severely inhibiting deception. The true motivation of evil is to weaken and enslave all that is good. You can learn from that, but it is not its intent that you learn from and defeat it. For it would prefer that you fail and that your soul degrades so that you are easier to control. Humanity must come to understand the nature of evil and the logical motivation of the philosophy of evil, which is that others are tools to be used for personal gain and that they are easier to use for personal gain and sadism when they are disempowered and dumb. Without that critical understanding, it's impossible to grasp the depths of deception and subliminal manipulation which occur on a daily basis from those who seek to control all other life for malicious purposes and which are also perpetuated by those who have simply been deceived and lack understanding. You must learn to see through this, though it is painful, for evil is by nature the act of non-consent against innocent consciousness, and wherever evil actions occur there is no balance until justice comes to the one who has done evil. I will switch gears now and examine the nature of goodness and virtue and love. At its core, simply caring about the well-being and the moral growth of others is one of the most important keys to learning to embody and emanate divine love in your every motivation and interaction. Now. People will not always like you for caring about their fundamental spiritual well-being and moral growth. Because sometimes caring means that you will want to confront them when they are being self-destructive so as to encourage them to take better care of their own spirits. A lot of people prefer complacency and hate being confronted about their addictions or their negative behaviors. But sometimes confronting such things with tact is the only way that those people will ever grow even if you are hated for your benevolent intent. Learning how to appropriately confront both individual vices as well as situations and systems of injustice is a major component of being truly good that people do not always contemplate. True and pure love cannot sit idly by in situations of injustice. In this way, goodness is often more confrontational than evil because goodness desires the growth of all conscious beings, while evil benefits from complacent stagnation and decay. It likewise cannot remain neutral and watch when that which it loves destroys itself without trying to interfere and help. Love and goodness are not about peace and contentment, they are about improvement, even when that improvement hurts, and it almost always does. 
I'm going to end on that note. I pray that this has given you something to think about. And if you have any questions about good and evil, please do not hesitate to ask them in the comment section and we can get a conversation started there. As always, blessings and curses to those who deserve them.